are you? Hi there. <laughs> How are you? Good. <laughs> I am pruning a skip laurel. I have them all around my garden and they grow very rapidly. They grow tall and bushy and each year I have to trim them, prune them to a narrow form so they don't grow over my boxwoods and all my flowers that'll come up this spring. So what I'm trying to do is, is make them flatter and, and top them so that they'll eventually grow back next year, but it's just a process. And so the way I prune is the number one goal is to make them thin against the fence. And I take, I kind of prune them like roses. They say you should prune roses where you go down and cut them right above where a, a leaf is coming out or thing. And that way, if I cut it there, it'll die just like that did. So you, it won't grow out. So you have to prune it right above a, a, a leaf or a little stem. And so it's a process of trying to keep, keep it sheared and also cut it so that it leaves back out and, and gets full again, because I'm just gonna skin them like that. I just skin that one down. It looks pretty ragged right now, but it'll, it'll leaf out there fully and be a, a wall of green is what I'm aiming for. So, and then I'll tell you while we're here, the boxwoods have become very delicate plants because of this um, blight that's going around. So it's, you have to prune them this time of the year. If you prune them in the summer, they'll get the blight possibly and they'll spread everywhere. So I'm just gonna basically trim those back. So pruning in winter is much better for plants that are susceptible to it, certain it, diseases it and that, things. And it also, um, see these things are already beginning to leave um, bud out. That's a you know, new growth is coming out. And that we don't want to, we want to prune before this thing leaves out. It just makes it a much better plant and much healthier and it looks better. So it's simple as that. <laughs> the, um, but it's not that simple because you have to think every time you cut something, it, it'll grow back. These are Japanese maples and they have to be trimmed and thinned and pruned every year because they grow rapidly back and they grow out and shade my, the sun out of my garden. So it's the same process. You always cut um, where there's little limbs coming out so they'll leaf out and this won't grow anymore, but that'll, so you just, and then you see there and wherever. I hadn't gotten up into there, I'm not tall enough. But it's, it's just a process of, you just don't want to come in here and plant the thing where there's no limbs growing out because it'll just die back and it'll be you know the object is to have plenty of green in the summertime but thin down a little bit so <laughs> awesome. that's all i know <laughs> <laughs> all you need to know <laughs> so cold it's going to be snowing tomorrow with 14 degree temperature i, I was just told so i said well i better get out because i got to prune all of these plants in here and i prune about one or two a day when the weather's good so maybe by the end of March the 15th, it'll all be done. Mm -hmm. One or two year, a I day. Did, I waited too late and I didn't prune the thing and it's just really overgrown now. So. <laughs> <laughs> just one or two a day will... Keep the doctor away. We'll keep the doctor away. Oh, hey, buddy. And there's my chicken. That is Lucy. And that's Lucky over there. And they're my two pet, Al, my wife and I, my pet chickens. They've been really friendly lately because I think they missed y'all on your trip. <laughs> yeah, I think they did. <laughs> they better eat up today because it's going to be snow on the ground mm -hmm. tomorrow. Hedgehog. This is a hedgehog. That's all it's called. Okay, are you filming? <laughs> so we're going to 
the, the process of these are small and they're planted six feet apart and the object is for them to grow into a hedge as that whole hedge is and you'll see that in a minute so you just hate, hate to cut anything off of these little babies but if you don't they'll just grow long and it'll take them twice as long to fill into a thick hedge so what i do and i've done this before did this we planted them this spring i cut the tops out just so they would keep them from growing up and they would grow out laterally and then so these things uh, have grown long that's the new growth yeah from this, this past all new year. growth and so what i have to do now is just come in and just trim cut a little piece off of each one of these things so they'll branch out in three parts and get thicker and thicker rather than have long limbs that just grow from here out and so that's the process no um too complicated so we're just trimming the little bits off the end so that they grow back bushier and fuller So that might be enough for him for right now. These, that, those two were equal to these two, and they just grow very thick and very full, and it makes a great screen. These are the Vider, and it's the Green Giant, and tend to grow 20, 25 feet thick and tall, but they make a great hedge. You just have to trim it once or twice a year. And all it takes, I have to get it where it's growing and growing and growing. And you have to do that for about three or four years till they start touching and filling in. Once they're filled in, you literally just take this thing. Beautiful. And what I, you notice that I went from the bottom up. It's a lot easier because the limbs grow naturally up. They cut a lot better than if you try to do it like. It's a lot easier. If you go up, it'll, it'll cut a lot easier because mm -hmm. the limbs fall down and they're meant to cut. You kind of have to do this once or twice just to kind of but you cut the, the major part first and then you come back and, and just tighten it up and trim it up and make it look neat. Mm -hmm. um, and that's literally all there is to it. It's a lot of work when you have a 50 foot hedge, but it's still very doable. But it's a nice process because when we came, this is a parking lot for a restaurant next door. I had all these cars coming in and all I could see were the bumpers of cars. Right. And now I don't see any and I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, really... it's a little fuzzy now. Once you get it pruned, it looks very crisp and very mm -hmm. clean. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't have to fertilize them, don't have to do anything to them. The soil was very poor when we planted it, when we bought this place. And um, I you know, they probably would have grown fast, but they really grow fast. So if you want a good hedge, Arborvita, Green Giant. We do a lot of um, new houses. We don't do a lot of them, but we have in the past in, in say in cities and they have small lots and big houses, two and three stories. Everybody wants to have some separation between the mm -hmm. houses. We plant these because they are magical. They grow fast, they grow thick, they have no diseases that I know of, and everybody's always happy with them. They're they beautiful. Don't so, they don't all get so wide. Mm -hmm. So that's a real good way to um, use for a, a screening hedge. What I did is I just planted some every third space between the squares. Just add a little more emphasis, and these are gonna grow up and I'm add one right where that bark is and that just kind of make it consistent it'll be a very pretty hedge with 
you know, a bottom and they'll have spikes on the top. So that's it. Yay. Yeah. Privacy. Yeah. Right on. Well, anyway, thank so, you. This is nice to be out here and, and, and pruning. And there's my pile. I've got to, I try to clean up as I go each day. So that's my next job is to finish pruning that. And I think I'll clean up and take a nap. Sounds good. <laughs>